This is the Nutra Medica Report with Tim Alexander, the Earl of Sterling, uh, hosting uh, this hour for Dr. Bell Deagle. Uh, with me is the eminent uh, analyst, military and political analyst, Paul Martin, uh, for the first half hour. And then our nuclear expert, Chris Harris, will be with us uh, in the bottom half hour. Well, Paul, we've uh, had an interesting bit of information come out of Greece, uh, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. It's up on the my website's revolutionradio.org. Uh, it was breaking out just too long ago. Uh, Greece on the verge, question mark. Military special forces have 15 demands or else. And one of the demands is the resignation of the entire government. Yeah, uh, Greece has been literally uh, gutted by the global banking cartel, and uh, the people's lives have been wrecked. Uh, people literally have been going through uh, garbage cans trying to get food for their families. Uh, the litany of, of horrible things that have happened to Greek people over the last year. Uh, we could probably spend a half hour just talking about that. But uh, the, the military has kind of stood on the sidelines, but it's been quite obvious that, uh, you know, it just, it's too much for them. They, 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 there's been a lot of sympathy for uh, an extreme right-wing party in Greece by some of the military and police. And they're, they've just had their belly full. And now, now this looks like this could be, you know, if this happens, Paul, this could trigger, I mean, Spain could be next. Italy could uh, could follow. In fact, the Italian government is very close to collapse right now. Uh, this could uh, this could be could be a landslide that could take power away from the global banking cartel. Well, absolutely. If you, if you look at the unemployment rates, especially in the youth, I mean that's a lot of testosterone. They're, I mean they're they're just building a bomb. So you're absolutely right. I mean, what are we talking about? Like fifty, sixty percent or more? Uh, some places, seventy five percent of the young people can't find jobs. Oh, absolutely. It's it's it's. I mean, they're they're just clubbing those people like baby seals over there, and that's absolutely. Of course, they're, they're doing the same thing to us here, but uh, uh, the, the the worrisome problem. Uh, uh, I've got five different sources that uh, two or three of the top things that they're worried about is an EMP strike and a uh, false flag event, and, then, and these are people that are way above my pay grade. I mean, you've got a government on the ropes. I don't know why Obama's approval rating is is as high as forty three percent, but it is. But I mean, with the well, yeah, but you know they lie too. I mean, who knows what it really is? Well, uh, that's true. I'm just going on, you know, the today's today's poll numbers. But uh, you know, you got what was it six months ago? Brzezinski came out basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing here. Well, they know who we are. They know what we're doing. This isn't good. Uh, so. <laughs> And uh, he also uh, there's a they, there's a saying uh, Zignu has made. Uh, it is easier now to kill a million people than to control a million people. Whereas in times past, it was easier to control a million people than to kill a million people. And you could substitute a billion or six billion uh, for the million. Uh, and that's with military technology. Well, in the short time that we've got, uh, one of the things that you guys might want to look at at revolutionradio.org, it was just breaking that the Gold Seek banking holiday in Panama announced. They didn't even tell the people. Uh, according to the article, most of the Panamanian people get paid on the weekends, and all the uh, ATM machines and everything shut down. I think that's and they, you know, they blamed it on a computer glitch. Of course, we've been having computer glitches all over the country. And if you've ever listened to B, who is uh, Steve Quayle's uh, uh, former trader from the Royal Bank of Scotland, his interviews on the Hagman Hagen report, uh, he says unequivocally that they're going to electronic, electronically just dump everything. And uh, there was a great um, uh, piece up and. Uh, at the revolutionradio.org, uh, looting the pension funds all across America. It's a great article by Matt Tayabi. If you've got people that are, that are in pension funds, teachers, police officers, and everything, this thing's going to get greasy. 
Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm one of the things that concerns me, this disastrous Obamacare, uh, the Republicans are, are digging in their heels, which is a very good thing. But uh, the fact that they will shut the government down, will be out of money uh, in this country, they project by October the 17th. And, uh, of course, on October 1st, we have a trucker strike, which the mainstream media is totally ignoring. Not only is it going to be all across the United States, the Canadian truckers have agreed to join in with it. So basically, across the North American heartland, uh, you're going to see a massive trucker strike. Things like food, fuel, you know, everything we have to have moves by trucks. Um, and then you have this shutdown of the federal government. Well, granted, a lot of the federal government should be shut down permanently, but a lot we have to have. And I, I'm afraid that this will be the catalyst or what will be blamed for the catalyst for the economic collapse. The globalists want an economic collapse. They want a third world war. They want a pandemic, all of which is designed to bewilder, to overwhelm the, the population of the earth. And with the pandemic, which, of course, we know will probably be MERS as it's spreading uh, and will be spread from the Hodge, the, the pandemic the war and the combination of absolute global chaos will just overwhelm us. They'll tell us we have to stay locked down. Uh, then the mark of the beast, the chip, the RFID chip will be there. It's just a carnicopia literally out of the deepest bowels of hell. Uh, we can see is about to, to, to fall on us. However, you know, uh, we, if you look back, they don't always get their way. They were very close to triggering a war and Western invasion of Syria, which would have triggered the Third World War. Uh, and the British House of Commons, in a surprise vote, said, no. Uh, enough people woke up and said, hold it. My life is going to be ruined. I won't be able to play my golf game. I won't be able to go to the store. Everything that I know will be destroyed. And even if I, quote, end quote, survive in some shelter for members of parliament, what will that mean? And, and they, they objected. And you could see that the House of Representatives in the United States and possibly even the Senate were going to do the same thing. That's why we didn't go to war about three weeks ago. So these characters, these these demonically driven evil so-and-sos can be stopped. And this thing in Greece, is, I think, is very interesting because finally you're seeing some, some people in military uniforms that are putting their foot down and say, you're not going to destroy our country to the global banking cartel. Well, they've, I, I mean, the military's got to be pretty jacked up because, I mean, their suicide rate over there, I mean, they've just had, especially the elderly, uh, just been killing themselves on the streets. You know, I don't have anything left, left. They took my house. I have no food. You know, I'm checking out. So that's pretty heartbreaking to watch from a uh, from a from a military perspective for these people that, that have just been, like I said, just been clubbed like baby seals. Uh, yeah. One of the things I want to tell the listeners, one of my my very top source, uh, who I affectionately call the East Coast. Uh, is uh, he said a year ago, uh, a little over a year ago last summer, he said prepare to hold in place. That in the only reason you'd have to do that is because of pandemic. And uh, out today, uh, the um, World Health Organization cons raises concern about possible spread of mirrors among Hodge victims. And it was on Recombinomics here about three or four days ago that this one gentleman, a 16-year-old gentleman from Riyadh, actually had three different versions of the mirrors inside him. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was on uh, with Dr. Deagle the other day, and we, we kind of touched on that. Uh, I think all of us that are, well, we'll talk more about this when we get back. We're uh, going to have a break here, folks. Uh, we'll be back. Paul Martin, Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling. We'll be back in a minute. Well, this is Tim Alexander with Paul Martin, and we're trying not to lose our mind as we look at all the rather crazy, demonic stuff that's uh, going 
slowing down uh, around the world. Um, let's get back to this MERS thing, uh, which stands for Middle East Respiratory Symptom. Um, the there's a a way they can track the evolution of a virus, and. Uh, they they have a, a computerized system where they can predict uh, based on certain things when it's apt to you know how often it's apt to go into uh, uh, mutations. Well, MERS is not; uh, it's resetting that clock all the time because they're getting all these new recombinations of, of viruses, and you know, like you said, one person with three and so forth. Uh, anybody that knows something about what I call advanced biological warfare, that is biological warfare based on genetic engineering, taking snippets of DNA uh, from multiple viruses and putting them together and creating a new virus and then tweaking that and having multiple versions of that. Uh, anybody that is aware of that technology and has followed it and knows it knows that what we're looking at with mirrors is clearly a man-made pandemic ready to happen. Well, and you know that I I posted it. Uh, it came out on the twentieth at uh, SIDRAP, which is the University of uh, Minnesota's website. Uh, that, that they don't even know what this is. You can go to. Uh, uh, just Google up SIDRAP in the uh, articles there. Uh, they've had this bug for a year, and they still don't know what it is. And one of the more disturbing facts is that the Saudis have sent two uh, samples of this. It's at the Columbia University, uh, Columbia University in downtown New York City, and and this stuff should have been in at least a, le a level three or a level four lab because they don't even know what it is. The people at Columbia didn't even know what it was. So that that tells me everything I need to know. Yeah, yeah. It uh, I, here's what I think. I, I think is the global collapse, economic collapse, begins, which has been long planned, um, in their drive for a new world order. And as uh, a Middle East based war begins, they know that one uh, the. Uh, the Iranians have the most, one of the most sophisticated advanced bio-war programs on Earth, uh, which they basically bought uh, from the former Soviet Union when they collapsed by hiring many of their top scientists. Um, they know that uh, uh, if Iran is threatened with nuclear annihilation or is being destroyed, uh, that they'll release uh, perhaps as many as 50 or 100 different viruses around the world. Now, they will want to blame this uh, early on, on not a war. They don't want you know, people saying, well, you so-and-so, you started World War III, and now we're all going to die. Uh, they have a, a plausible deniability built into place here. They're going to say, oh, this is, the, this is uh, the, a camel virus. This is uh, MERS, which uh, came from camels or something like that, or bats in the caves in Saudi Arabia. But the Muslims, they spread it when they came back from their uh, big pilgrimage. And so you can kind of blame it on the Muslims, but it's really natural. And by the way, you're all going to have to be locked down, and we're going to uh, have distribution centers for food and, and various medicines and so forth. And we've got a chip here that we'll put in you to, sh to prove that you're, you're not infected. And um, that's what I think is going down. Now, do I know that for certain? No. I don't have a crystal ball. None of us do. All we can do as analysts is look at all the data we've got in front of us and say, yeah, yeah, okay, this makes sense. This looks like this is the direction they're going. It's very scary when you look at it because it's it's so bizarre. It's so over the top. It uh, If you're a human being, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but if you are driven by out-of-this-world demonic forces that want to destroy this planet and human life on it, uh, then I guess from their sick perspective, it makes sense. Absolutely. Before we get off the air here, 
Uh, I got a call from my buddy Hawk last night. Hawk has the Thrive to Survive show. One of his uh, sources in Florida, his brother is a fighter pilot. I'm not going to tell the air wing. Uh, but day before yesterday, uh, the uh, their wing commander called all the pilots. And we, we've talked about this, and this is, uh, I can confirm that this is a... Uh, a fighter wing of uh, uh, it's it's a very important. Let's put it that yeah. way. And uh, he told uh, all of his pilots, he said to get all of your money out of the banks uh, before October first. Have your family members, grandparents, aunts, uncles, everybody get out of the banks by October first. And uh, one of the pilots uh, stood up and asked him uh, why, and he just said one word: nuke. So we do know that we've got two nukes missing from Dias Air Force Base in West Texas that were reportedly trucked out to South Carolina. Alex Jones broke that story. So with everything that's going on with this government on the ropes, they need a big, 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 I mean scary, scary story to get the uh, uh, the sheep rounded up, get ready for this war. Because I, I don't see how they can't go in. Well, they... Uh people behind this literally are demonically driven, and they will stop at nothing to get uh, to get back on the, the roadmap. And they know that they're literally a handful of people, thousands of, of people out of a planet that has over 7 billion human beings on it. And we've been allowing them through their their counterfeit money. Their, you know, they print their own money. Uh, it's called the Federal Reserve System, the Bank of England, etc. Uh, we've allowed them to manipulate our governments, our countries, our world, our economy, our everything. And now they're literally manipulating us down to our own deaths, our destruction, the absolute total destruction of life on this planet via the uh, the Third World War, uh, via advanced biological warfare, uh, by nuclear warfare, and a little, you know, Fukushima. Look at Fukushima, how just literally a handful of nuclear reactors in their storage sites uh, are spreading poison all over the world. Once we go into a, a nuclear war, every power plant on Earth will eventually become just like Fukushima. And that alone, not counting a few thousand nukes going off, will just destroy life on this planet. As Christians, we know that Armageddon will end with the return of Christ. But it's still a very scary thing to, to perceive. Paul, thank well, you very much. Folks, if you want to uh, follow his, his site, it's, uh, what is it, revolutionradio.org. And mine is Europe. Um, I'll be back in a minute with Chris Harris. This is the Nutra Medico Report. Uh, this is Tim Alexander, the Earl Sterling, with our nuclear expert, Chris Hedges. Uh, our, Chris. Um, you're one of the top people on the planet in terms of nuclear safety. You've been a nuclear engineer for years. We, as I was saying uh, on the break, we have talked about this for almost two years now. And, you know, once the the uh, earthquake, the Sumani, and then the nuclear disaster happened, uh, once the initial coverage was over by the mainstream media, it's like they embargoed the story. They didn't, they didn't want to cover it at all. And there's really been a handful of people early on, almost two years ago, that, that we kept insisting this was a disaster, and it was a disaster that was going to be of biblical proportions. Uh, yourself, uh, Dr. Deagle, myself, uh, people like Paul Martin, uh, Mike Rivero, Jeff Reins, uh, and, and several others. Uh, we were out there kind of in the wilderness, 
screaming at the top of our lungs, this is this is bad. This is bad news. And at times I, I, I felt like, well, hell, we're, we keep beating this. This is a dead horse we're beating. Uh, we're out here and nobody else is paying, uh, is covering it. And now all of a sudden, even the mainstream media can't really ignore it. It's getting so bad. But Tim, I, I couldn't have put it better. What would you do? If, what would you think if something you did for a living? You, you're well. I'm, I'm not the world's top expert. I'm, I'm merely, merely uh, been involved for 30 years and I paid attention. What would you do if something you've been doing for all your life, all of a sudden you realize that it's well, what happened? It took a turn for the worse and is causing detrimental damage that's beyond control, and to a point where it would make make your stomach go in a knot just thinking about what is actually happening and so what would you do if you could you keep that quiet or would you would you have to go and discuss it and and try to well at least at least send out a warning if there's nothing else you can do at least at least warn people about it is there i mean you could i don't think you could keep quiet about it. and that's really what i was well that's to. always been my problem and maybe and it may get me killed or thrown in some gulag or what other uh yeah, down the, the road soon but but look, you have a duty, I think, as a Christian, to uh, yeah. to come out and and when you're in a position like you are, and and I am with with my knowledge of of so much of this stuff, you have a duty to try to warn people, and. You know, I'm I'm not a saint by any wild stretch of imagination, and when I will stand before my God, my my poor wife has been dead for quite a number of years now. I will stand before my God when I die, and I will have to say to Him, "Well, okay, I screwed up a bunch here and here," and you know, He says, "Yes, I know," and then I'll say, "Well, I did try to do some good, and hopefully, the the good that I tried to do will outbalance." the bad that I've done. And that, that basically is, you know, all of us have that. And I, I feel like, and I, I think you do too, that we have to we have to warn people about what's coming. You know, if, if God's right. given you this knowledge, then you have to do something with it. Yeah, and it that's where we're at. Right to, keep it, to keep it quiet is not right to, uh, to, to, well, let's put it this way. The, the the news of Fukushima and all of the related events and the detriment that, that it will cause and is causing has been hushed up and it's been tried to it's been squelched and controlled and it has been done that on purpose. So that uh well those those who wanted to control the information coming out, they really wanted to be in direct control and to to let it out at, at uh, when they wanted to. So they didn't want people to come out. Although my peers, you know, they all they all uh, could have come out, and I think some of them did. You know, they could have said, you know, this this is really happening. This is what we need to see. And and I, I'm actually fortunate to know some of these folks who had the um, courage to speak up. And uh, it was just uh, by the luck or happenstance that uh, that Dr. Deal asked me to uh, represent that particular point of view, and so hopefully I'm doing it adequately. Uh, well, we have, I think, uh, it's something like five to six million people uh, between broadcast, the broadcast and the people that listen in online uh, turn into this report on a pretty much a daily basis. Now, that's a lot of people. Uh, that we reach, and you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. It, 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 the insanity about this: had they tackled this problem early on, and I mean, I don't mean uh, you know, uh, shoveling manure, and I'm, I have to watch my language, but shoveling manure uh, and lies and, and trying to cover things up doesn't make the problem go away when you've got several nuclear reactors that are, are, are literally headed towards uh, the China syndrome, and now we've already been there. Uh, and it looks like, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the nuclear core may have hit bedrock in a couple cases. Now, what the hell do we do? I mean, we had an opportunity. That opportunity passed over a year ago, I think. Uh, and now, you know, it's 
I don't know. I mean, like I say, how can you drill down uh, and, you can, and stick a giant straw somehow and, and, and pull this nuclear sl- uh, mass out of uh, wherever it's at? I, I, we I, don't have I a don't. technology. And, yeah, and know, I know we, we talk about we talk about a lot of ideas because we're also desperate trying to help also what if we tried this what if we tried that and and so uh, some of them some of the ideas that we discussed i was surprised to see that those were actually uh decisions that were taken by uh you know by the japanese and so uh it, it makes me think that you know we're not we're not totally out to lunch we're not we're not out there a lot of the things are like covering up the plant otherwise you're going to get you're going to get intrusion or rainwater which goes in clean and comes out absolutely contaminated. You can check the archives. We've discussed this uh, all, all a year and a half or so more more ago, and we did come out with a list. Some of the ideas, though, are just not readily available technology that, that, that it, even if it were readily available, would definitely improve the situation there, but, there, but it's not. And probably to the fault of the, I'm going to say, the, the whole industry and, and, and the Nuclear industry and the the regulators who were so, they're, they're the ones who are supposed to know better did not take action early enough or did not uh, and uh, to the, to the well, it also strikes me as, as, as we've let the Japanese uh, handle this and are grossly mishandle it, but this isn't yeah. just a problem for Japan. This is a problem for the world. And yeah, and that, that's what really, uh, that's, that's what really would, would make my stomach go into knots. I said, you know what, this is going to affect everybody. This doesn't, ca- this doesn't care about what political view you, you have or, or don't have. This doesn't care what religion you are. This is something that's coming now, and it won't stop at a geopolitical border, and it won't stop at a mountain range, and it won't stop at an ocean. This is certainly uh, what's going around the world. Literally. And so when I see- Literally, God only knows how many thousands of people this event has already killed around the world in terms of cancers and so forth. Well, I mean, if you want to speak, there are people who do that, and they speak in terms of statistics and all. I, I, that's not my area. My area is to look at, uh, you know, what the physical plant is, the idea is that you contain this, and you never, never let it leave, and you never let it leave uncontrolled if you do. We've got a completely open sore. It is leaving uncontrolled uh, new uh, fresh water from the groundwater. That's something I didn't even think of right away, by the way. I just want to give credit where credit's due, uh, like uh, 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 Dan Wilkie over at, uh, uh, he's got some articles out, uh, discussed about that was happening. And those, those, those were things, you know, that I didn't even think of initially. I said, you know, the groundwater we, there is We're going to take a so commercial up. break here. Uh, Chris, uh, we'll, uh, Chris, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Chris Harris, Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling. This is the Nutra Medical Report with Chris and Tim talking about the absolute ongoing nightmare uh, at Fukushima. And Chris, um, yeah, we were, we were talking about this on the break, and I've been listening to you for almost two years now and, and really picking up a lot of knowledge about this. I'm not a, a nuclear engineer. I've known uh, nuclear engineers, but that's because you know somebody. It doesn't mean you have their knowledge. And through your your explanations, I've picked up a lot. But... Uh, I well, still, you know, that's where that's I'm still problem. learning. Like, to make it, it's not, it's not magic, and it's not, you know, it, 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 people think, oh, nuclear, nuclear, this, that. It's, it, there's a real, there's a reason why it's constructed like it's constructed, and it has both good things, and it both has, and it has vulnerabilities. And right now, all the vulnerabilities in uh, Fukushima have all lined up like like wickets, like in a in a uh, croquet game, in a point where that ball is easily right straight to meltdown. And that's that's really what I wanted to try to explain to people. Yeah, so let's let's go there. We understand. Well, well, okay. Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. Well, uh, you, the, these things you said are stacked. They're they're vertical. 
vertical. They're not laid down horizontally. They're stacked vertically. The, these tubes that hold the enriched uranium are, in one case, uh, what is it, number three, the, uh, the MOX fuel, which is plutonium plus uranium. They're stacked in the the the, the so-called used uh, storage facility, and they're stacked vertically. They're constantly cooled, and they're so hot for what ten years they can't even be moved. Um, now, the, the, if, the radioactive there's, there's, there's several kinds of hazard. There's more than one kind of hazard with it. One of them is a is a radiation hazard. You can't go near the stuff. It has to be submerged by water, and which which provides shielding. It has to be cooled, otherwise the fuel will overheat and melt, and that in the water, again, provides cooling. So, in other words, the water in the spent fuel pools do several, they, they perform several functions. And another function for, for the water is that if it contains boron, it prevents criticality. That's yet another hazard that spent fuel has. If, if you remember over a period of the years that I was privileged to be on with you, I've always said that I am a huge uh, bug and concern about the spent fuel pools in, in all these. I mean, the, the, the reactor core is is going to do what it's going to do. There's there's not much else that we can do about it other than try to monitor its progress and try to try to do something to cool it. But we can do something about the spent fuel, and we should be doing it. And everything that's been happening with the spent fuel since the, uh, since the the uh, uh, buildings around Unit One were were blown off, and and which which I was horrified. And Unit Three was blown off, and I was horrified. There was an explosion. There were several explosions in Unit Two, but for some reason, they didn't get blown off. That was presumably due to hydrogen buildup and ignition, which caused the detonation inside. And it didn't take a whole lot of pressure difference between the inside of the structure and the outside of the structure to blow the buildings apart. What it did, though, and Unit Four, which uh, also who also lost its uh, reactor. Well, they're basically steel frame buildings with with a, a steel uh, sheeting on the outside, right? Right, and but, but what but what I saw, I see when I I look at things, I'm also I'm also a root cause analyst and, and a few other, you know, uh, I, I I wore a lot of hats, you know, in, over the career. And one thing I look at, I say, well, that that material didn't just blow away. That material went up in the air and it came down heavy inside the pool, damaging fuel. There's no question about it. It had Ooh. to. I looked at it and it said, so when I, when I see that, I said, well, I'm particularly concerned about broken fuel, twisted assemblies, which are now the assemblies. Let's go back to what you were saying. Uh, or trying to explain was that the fuel, uh, the fuel rods are, are built into an array called an assembly, and the assembly has uh, maybe a 17 by 17 or a 15 by 15, uh, that means 15, um, uh, 15 columns and 15 rows, like a little tight bundle, like, like a bundle of sticks uh, vertically, and there's some space in between each, each of them held because there's a grid, there's a grid strap that through which each of the fuel rods are, are penetrated, and there are several of the straps up and down the length. We're talking about 15 feet length of active fuel. And so, these things are designed they're, never to touch one another. Is that correct? Uh, they're, they, well, they, they're not supposed to touch each other. The consequences of that happening is you get a hot spot if the reactor is in operation and, and you're, you're You'll, you'll know it and you might even get fuel damage. But what the problem, what it does do is it allows cooling water to flow up in between and, and around surrounding each fuel so that the heat that you generate can be, remember, you want to generate heat with these. That's exactly what, that's what they're for. Yeah, so to boil water. water. And, and heat up, you, know, you want to heat up the water and, and you want flow. So you want that to happen, but you also want the heat to be removed from the fuel in an efficient manner so you don't melt them. Uh, so, you know, yes, it's important to keep a space, and we call that a coolable geometry. That means it's not twisted, it's not bent, they're not touching each other, it's not a rubble, it's not a pile of... Allows the water to flow efficiently, correct? Exactly, and now, and, and let's talk about, now let's go shift over quickly to the core. The core is no longer in a coolable geometry, which is essential to the definition of something we call cold shutdown. The cold shutdown assumes or presumes that you have a core that's capable of being cooled and maintained cool 
for a for a long duration, forever. Well, you, well, I knew that right away. I said, you know, you got fuel damage. How can you call something cold shutdown? You can't. It doesn't even meet the definition any longer. In fact, and after I mentioned that on the air a long time ago, I don't want to say, you know, it's not an ego thing. It's just an explanation, uh, trying to make an explanation. Uh, TEPCO did revise their definition of what cold shutdown is. And uh, that, that was documented. You know, I kept notes on everything that we've discussed on Dr. Bill's photo and, and, and with you. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going to dig it out right now when, when it was said and, and all that. But they did eventually come out and they said, you know, we got to revise what cold shutdown means. And they're not even meeting that. As obvious since uh, Unit 3 has wisps of steam coming out, actually pretty pretty good volume of steam. So there's something is hot down there. And, I, and, and so... Cold or cold shut that also means that it's below the uh, boiling point for water in atmospheric condition, which is we call it 200 degrees, even though we even though we know it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So to be safe, we, we uh, 200 degrees. Well, it's not even that. So where is the cold shutdown? They can't really claim that and be accurate. And I'm pointing that out. So now, now uh, let me ask you something. Okay, you've got seven pools and uh, four. Or I'm sorry, six are built high up uh, in the structures. Uh, one is more or less in the ground. That one's safe. Uh, reactors five and six are safe. But of the first four reactors, uh, we're in a world of hurt. But the pools themselves uh, haven't gone into a, a total meltdown yet or anything, but they could. And Right? Am I right? Well, this, yeah, well okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish, finish your thought. And I'll, I'll just want well, to I, I, I'm saying, and two, something has to be done because you uh, certainly at least on one or two of the the uh, uh, the structures, they're in a very precarious position and uh, the dangers of additional earthquakes and so forth. If these rods, or if the storage pool were to collapse and the rods would, would bang into one another or something, then you've got a danger of, of what, an atomic fire? Uh, well, that, that, of course, if there's enough heat load, then you could ignite the zirconium uh, uh, shell Again, around each of the it, tubes. It's a zirconium yeah. tube, correct? Yeah, yes. Uh, but... Um, so uh, let me just let me just uh, yeah, let me let me just go over to to what's going on in the news today. There's some 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 scientists and I haven't vetted their their work that's concerned about Unit Four collapsing because they they're damming up or stopping the flow of groundwater to the uh, you know and they're trying to get it to uh, stop this causing uh, uh, pooling of water and subsidence of the structure. Let me go back to an article I really quickly <laughs> that, that I wrote a while ago. You don't have to collapse Unit 4 to drain it dry. All you got to do is make it move a little bit so that the seal around the reactor cavity flange, which is called the refueling seal, breaks. That's the only thing holding up all the water in the spent fuel pool. It that sounds like bad, bad news. Right? It's very bad news because you won't have access to anywhere in the plant at all. You couldn't get anywhere close to it. That's very bad. And, and that's. Well, one thing that we all need to pray over, Fukushima and a lot of other stuff. Uh, Doc, Dr. Bill will be back. Uh, and folks, get close to God. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Chris Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Alexander. <laughs>